Hi, I'm Ashiel, and this is the America by Air exhibition at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Right now, I'm standing under a Curtis JN-4D. You may be familiar with its more popular name, its nickname, the Jenny. Planes like this one were used to deliver air mail back in the 1920s. This is the oldest plane in the exhibition. Now, I'm standing in front of a simulator of an Airbus 320 cockpit. An Airbus 320 is one of the jet airplanes that people fly on today. This is the newest piece of airplane technology in the exhibition. Do you think an Airbus 320 has anything in common with the Jenny? What do you think are the biggest differences and similarities? Hey, wouldn't it be cool to see a plane like the Jenny actually flying in the sky? Or how about a look inside a real Airbus 320 cockpit? Do you think that would help you with your answers? Yes? All right then, hold on to your hats because we're about to leave the museum. Hi, my name is Brian Stewart and this is a 1929 fleet aircraft. Even though this is an old airplane, 1929, by comparison to new airplanes, uh, this airplane was quite advanced for its day. It's a lot different than flying a new airplane. This airplane, you're flying it 100% of the time. There's no autopilot. You are in an open cockpit, so you've got the wind uh, rushing past your head. Uh, there's a lot of noise and you've got a much better sense of the airplane and the environment that you're flying in because you're, you're so exposed. Uh, if it's raining outside, you're getting wet. Hey, we've got some basic instruments in this airplane that are actually uh, still in airplanes of today. The basic instruments are the altimeter, which tells your height above the ground, along with his heading, okay, what directions he's heading. You also have an airspeed indicator, okay, and then the single instrument in this cockpit that is uh, an attitude information instrument, much like the newer instruments that are much better at that, is the turn and slip indicator. Okay? It gives you an idea of which direction the airplane is banked and whether or not it's the controls are coordinated, how well the pilot's flying. And then on the right-hand side, you have uh, engine in instruments. There's uh, oil temperature, oil pressure, cylinder head temperature. And all those instruments let the pilot know the status, uh, how well his engine's doing. You have a stick as opposed to a wheel in most modern aircraft. The stick moving to the left and right controls the aileron. If you move the stick to the right, the aileron goes down and that creates more lift on the left wing. And that raises the wing and turns the airplane to the right. And then the opposite movement of the stick, you raise the aileron moving the stick to the left that creates less lift on the left wing. The wing lowers and then the aircraft turns to the left. And this is the elevator and the stick, moving the stick aft, moves the elevator up, which forces the tail down and then points the nose up and helps you to climb. I move the stick forward, then it lowers the elevator, raises the tail and the nose goes down, which helps me to descend. You're bringing history alive when you fly something like this. Uh, just the same way the old pilots flew it, a uh, pilot today, even though he has all these modern airplanes, he still has to fly this aircraft the same way the pilots flew it back in the 1920s. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck. Hi, welcome aboard. I'm Captain Lori Klein with US Airways, and you're on the flight deck of the Airbus A320 aircraft, one of the most technologically advanced aircraft that flies commercially today. Why is it so advanced? For one reason, the computers. Take a look. This airplane is almost entirely run by computers. 
In fact, this one in front of me is the PFD, or primary flight display. It tells me where I'm turning and whether I'm climbing or descending. The one beside it is the ND, or navigational display, and that one, once we're in flight, is going to paint a virtual road map for us and show us where we're going, and it'll show us where we've been. In the middle is the kind of the brains of the airplane, or the system's nerve center, where it shows us everything about how much fuel is on board, how much hydraulics we have, whether or not you're warm enough when you're traveling in the back. Uh, now, the computer to the side is a flight management system, and before we take off, I'm going to load our route of flight into that computer. I'll engage the autopilot shortly after takeoff, and the airplane will fly exactly what I programmed into the computer. In fact, I won't even have to touch the airplane until we land. Did you notice anything missing on the flight deck? That would be the yoke that you'd find in conventional aircraft, the ones that are usually connected to cables and pulleys that turn the aircraft to the left or to the right when it's in flight. Well, on our aircraft, we use the side stick, and it's completely fly-by-wire. That means it sends a computer signal to the ailerons when we're in flight to turn it to the left or to turn it to the right. Now, on the ground, if I want to turn the aircraft, I have to use the control wheel or the steering column, and that's how we taxi the aircraft to get to the runway or to get to the gate after we've landed. The other automated system on the aircraft is the auto thrust. Now, when we take off, I advance the thrust, and when we reach about 120, 130 miles an hour, the airplane will just lift off the runway, and that thrust will remain there, and the computer will actually adjust the thrust for whatever the flight needs. So that's pretty much how the aircraft flies. Now, people ask, why is it called a glass cockpit? And it's called a glass cockpit because of all the computer screens. As I said, it's almost entirely run by computers. Actually, flying the aircraft is the most wonderful because I have the best seat in the house. I have the best view of the clouds, of the scenery, of cities, of states. And to be up there and have that feeling of being as free as a bird is something that's indescribable until you actually get the experience of flying yourself.